I decided to put together a video that will help you to understand the detailed steps on not only setting up your FileZilla and moving files over to your web account, but also how to access your information that you need and how to do what we are going to start doing, which will be to move after downloading WordPress files and installing them onto your own hosted account. So to start, let's go into your account. And the easiest way to get right to your login name is admin.oneandone.com. So you can put your domain name in or you can put your account um, your, your, or you can put in your customer ID. Your customer ID and your domain name are the same. Um, uh, they'll, they'll function in the same way. I want to thank Mackenzie she has allowed me to use her account. I am using her account for the purpose of demonstrating exactly what yours looks like and what steps to be taken. So the first thing to do to get your information is go to secure FTP account or to go to domains. I find secure FTP to be more direct. So let's click on that. And then you see the username already. However, if you go ahead and click on the username, it takes you to a page of information. So I know that in FileZilla I need to use this. So I'm going to Command C, or if you're on a PC, Control C, or right click and copy it, whatever your preference is. And now I will go and open FileZilla. The first thing that you need to do is to set up the site manager. Please do not use these portions right here, host, username, password, and port. This will not work properly. So go to file, site manager, and now I will put in here what I copied. Well, first I'll select new site and I'll call it um, it's, those are McKenzie's initials, so I'll put MB just for simplicity. Then I'll paste what I copied from the previous page. Now I also need to know what her username is. So Command C, go back over to here to normal, put her username in. And up here where it says FTP, change that to SFTP. And then I will put in her password. And normally when you click on connect, a box will come up and will ask you if you should trust this site. Make sure you check this box. In this case, it may not happen. OK, 
Okay, I'm obviously having connectivity issues. And yeah, well, this started just recently, and I am recording from home. Uh, so I have a suspicion that it has something to do with my internet service provider. So I'm not going to get much further. I'm going to go ahead and stop this. It will keep retrying if I don't stop it. But I will explain the next steps. After you have all that correct, you need to find your files for your website and drag them from here over to here onto the right side. Now, there's a common mistake or error that is made, and that error is that of dragging over here your folder that has your whole assignment in it. What you need to do is to open that folder on this side and bring the HTML file over or files. So I believe you have one called speakers.html and you have one called index.html. So after you create, after you do that over here, then drag the folder called images, the folder called styles. So if you have various folders that have items in it that the HTML file referred to, so your speakers, their pictures, in your HTML, it may say images slash tubin 75jpg If so, then that's the, that those pictures have to be in the images folder. If it merely has the speaker's name dot jpeg, then the pictures should be taken over here. However, I strongly suggest that you put them into folders and make sure that your HTML file says such. So since we didn't get to do the FileZilla aspect, um, that kind of omits a lot of what I'm recording. However, I want to go back to the one-on-one -on -one account and to show you how to do the steps of creating a subdomain. So in creating a subdomain, I created a handout that, that is on Moodle that will show you how with screenshots and explanations for everything. However, I'm going to go here, go to domains, and then you'll see a page like this, and you should have a blue link here says use your domain when you click on use your domain you have up here at the top another arrow that says use your domain so you have to do you have to click on the use your domain two times the small link and then this one I don't fully understand why but that is the case then you have these items across the top details privacy subdomains etc when you go to subdomains that is when you have the opportunity to create a new one so uh, Mackenzie did create one in class called blog so she has one sub subdomain already created However, she has 99 more that she can create. For the sake of this this video, I will go ahead and create one, and then I will later delete it so that it will not interfere. So I'm going to add subdomain, and then so since your already portion of your site is there the name.com or .org or whatever you call it then all you have to do is put in the first portion the actual sub domain name you may recall in, that we talked about 
things such as Moodle dot H T dot the name of university dot edu. Uh, then Mo the word Moodle is actually the, that's the subdomain. The same here. So let's create a subdomain called uh, so PR is something that um, may be an interest. So click save, or you can spell it public relations. PR.mckenzieborden.com is much easier to remember. The subdomain has been created. Now, the, there's a minor problem with this subdomain. It says the PR.mckenzie.com is going to put all, will read from the folder here your domain the slash dot all of your files that you put on your website go in this folder unless you are putting it on your subdomain then you need to create a new one please take notice what Mackenzie did up here for blog.mckenzieborden.com she created an additional place for those files to go called blog so they have their own account they have their own setup and PR would do the same so it's a use your domain and it's going to ask you okay well what do you want to call it and again you have to click on use your domain again then you'd say okay let's adjust the word uh, the web space directory this is where a little pencil will show up Instead of using the pencil, click on New Folder, and we're going to name the folder. It doesn't really name what, matter what you name it. I'm doing it just to show that you can do something different than what already exists. And it should show up here in a few seconds. And there it is. When I click on it, I hit save. And it takes me to a page that says, the status is updating. Therefore, the next time I go to FileZilla, there will be a folder within all of my files that will call be public underscore relations. In that folder, what I would do is drag and drop my files, such as index.html, for the PR page. And then folders that may be related, whatever I am creating there. So in a sense of speaking, you can have multiple websites. And as for creating your subdomains, that is all there is to it. Let's look at blog.mckenzieborden.com and see what it looks like, just to give you some insight. Okay, um, what we did in class was on Thursday is to drag and drop the WordPress account for a blog, a theme setup that um, Mackenzie selected just for the sake of practice and discovering how to do this. So uh, that's how her subdomain works. If we go to just MackenzieBorden.com, we'll probably go to her homework. Yes, which you are very familiar with seeing. Okay, well, that's all there is to it since we have difficulties in our FileZilla connection uh, in the making of this video. However, I hopefully um, did portray the ways of using FileZilla to the point that you'll understand it even though we didn't get to see it in action. Thank you, and if you have any questions, you know how to get a hold of me.
Have a good one. Bye.